So today I will show you an effect that I have shown you before about uh, acrylic paints and alcohol, but it will be with a twist. So I'm using Extreme Sheen, I'm using Sapphire, Aquamarine, Pink Tourmaline, uh, and Violet to obtain all these effects. And um, I have already cut some white Primo Clay on the thicker setting. I will be using mica powder, that is pure mica powder, and I will also be using metal powder. And you will see they behave differently when mixed with alcohol. Of course, I will be using a little bit of water for the acrylic paints and some 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol, a paintbrush, some toothpicks, uh, that I need to do the dropping and uh, a couple of those little cups for mixing. So, and I am using the Geofort cutters in this one because a very dear friend uh, made a present to me of a set. So I uh, promised her I will be using them and also I need a pretty big surface to show you everything. So I thought these would be perfect. Now, watch when I am uh, putting the metal powder in the alcohol compared to when I'm putting the mica powder. Uh, if you notice, the metal powder lifts to the surface while the mica powder uh, drops to the bottom. And I will be using this specific behavior in order to get the effects I am looking for. The mica powder needs a lot of stirring and I'm actually going to add a little bit more metal powder there because it looks a little bit too thin. But anyway, to go over the whole process real quick, I am just uh, placing a little bit of Extreme Sheen colors. Uh, as a piece of advice, make sure that you uh, shake them really good before using them because otherwise you'll have a lot of the pigment on the bottom and you will not they have a kind of gel they are not like ordinary acrylic paints so um, yeah you know that my camera kind of shifts the first color that i have put there is actually amethyst so it's purple but the camera shows it blue so after putting that that first i will be dropping the alcohol with metal powder because of the fact that the metal powder lifts and here we'll go uh, close up and really really uh, detail to see what happens because of the metal powder uh, lifts lifts to the surface of the alcohol uh, it will behave differently when you drop the mix on the wet acrylic paints. Now, remember from the previous tutorial I made on this, you need your acrylic paints to be wet. This will not work on dried acrylic paints. So when I first uh, put the drops of alcohol with metal powder, see what happens? The bloom kind of carries the metal powder but when i put in the drops with mica powder the mica powder sits in the center and the circle of alcohol surrounds it and you can play and actually place uh, mica powder alcohol in the middle of metal powder uh, bloom and I will wait for this to dry out and then I will be applying a second coat of acrylics just to get that uh, effect uh, where the blooms uh, shift the acrylic on top and you can see a little bit of what is underneath. And this is the result. So let's take a closer look. This is the close up and you can see it is a lot of organic stuff going there that is absolutely gorgeous now let's go ahead and get to the next step for the next step I have one sheet on the right it's the white on the third thinnest setting and on the left it's uh, white on the thickest setting and uh, using Helen Braille's jitterbug uh, texture so I am using a cutter that is uh, one size larger than my pieces that I have uh, done the acrylic on. 
and then um, on the left i'm going to try and uh, find spots where i don't hit that raised area to create bezels so i am first going to place the size that's bigger and then the size that is exactly the size of my pieces with the acrylic effects and uh, I will be cutting very nicely you might if you use this specific texture you might have to run it through the pasta machine several times until you get the um, uh, proper uh, prints for uh, the edge now if you have trouble with this my advice is to bake first the base and then apply the bezel uh, in this case, it was very hot where I am, so uh, the Primo was getting really hard to handle, so I had to do a lot of um, cleaning on the edges. And by the way, this is the reason why I'm not very fond of plastic cutters, because they leave a very unclean edge, if you want, that needs a lot of uh, cleaning after once I do my uh, placement of the bezels, I am going to take some uh, chalk pastels and using the same hues, the same colors that I've used in the special effects, but much more subdued. And I'm going to uh, place them on my bezels. The idea is that generally you do not use a bezel or a background that would be also patterned when you have a patterned uh, center. But in this case, uh, you can if the bezel or respectively the background is way more subdued than your central point of interest. So I will be making these bezels very subdued compared to uh, the central part that would be pretty much like a cabochon. So first I am using these very subdued colors and I'm going to give them a little bit of oomph, just a little bit using also um, a pinch of black and a pinch of a stronger blue. Now, if you choose a different uh, color combination for the extreme sheen, uh, do the same thing when you choose your stronger color for the bezel, choose the color that would be dominant in your focal area. Then once I uh, load the bezels with the chalk pastels, I'm going to lift the brunt of the chalk pastel uh, from the raised areas using scotch tape and then I'll just bake them and sand off the raised areas and this is the result pretty much and um, once I have those baked then it's time to put in the central parts that let's call them cabochons even if they are not really cabochons so I'm using first some bake and bond and then I will be placing these uh, pieces and make sure that you put a little bit of bake and bond also on the edges of the pieces and then I'll place them and very gently with the roller pin I will stretch them to fit all the way and because you see uh, handling the polymer clay it's going to cause a little bit of distortion and I also uh, did on purpose a little bit of distortion to make these look a little bit more wonky sorry jet plane flying because I didn't want it to look you know like everything that's out there so uh, very gently with the roller you might get a little bit of cracks but that's fine it will only add to the organic look of the piece until you get everything in place after which you do another baking yeah this is not a very difficult um, a thing to do it just requires a lot of baking if you want to do things properly and you see that I am rolling and stretching very delicately until I have all the edges meeting the bezel edge and then it's time to bake 
Now for the next step, I'm going to use the extruder with the finest uh, little tiny hole and some more white because I want to enhance the look of the central cabochon. I'm going to put a very, very, very thin string of white around the central piece. And uh, for that, I'm using a toothpick to uh, place a little bit of bacon bond. The only one on which I'm going to actually put two strings will be the um, biggest, uh, the focal uh, bead. And if you have any spots in which your central cabochon did not meet the bezel, now would be about the time to fill in those spots so you don't have your little string sinking. And that is very easy to do and you don't have to worry because it will not be seen, it will be covered by the string. Just use whatever sculpting tool you are uh, most comfortable with and cram a little bit of a white clay in there. And of course you can do this with the bezel with black clay. I just don't advise you to do any kind of metal uh, or anything that would look more um, uh, colorful, more shiny, because you do not want to take the attention away from the central part. So as you can see, I am just gently placing the white string around the central piece, the cabochon, and then gently blend the, the two ends which is very easy to make. You don't have to worry about it. And there we go. I will be pre-baking these for 10 minutes because before uh, placing the backing on because I don't want to mess it up when I'm handling the pieces. So as you can see on the bigger, on the focal bead, I am using two strings, one near the other. And then I will be baking these for about 10 minutes, up to 15 minutes, just to be sure that that little string is in place. You don't need more bacon bond for the second string because it's in touch with raw clay. So it will not uh, come off. And we are ready for baking. Now, in order to put the backings on, uh, do not um, first do the texture and then put the backing on because it's going to be very difficult. Uh, what you want to do is to get, see, if you do this, you'll get a whole bunch of distortion, even if it, the texture looks nice, but by the time you're done, it will be all distorted. Instead, uh, run your clay through, the, again, the third thinnest setting because you don't want your pieces to be too bulky. And then simply put some bacon bond on the back, uh, cut approximately the size of your uh, beads, and then place the sheet of clay on the back with a lot of care not to trap air bubbles. And then bring it up on the edge, and yeah, let me not forget, put some bacon bond on the edge uh, too. Uh, do some rough trimming, and then we'll use the um, property that raw clay always has when it's on an edge, and you get over it with a rolling pin, it's going to just break wherever is the edge of the baked clay. So that is what we are going to use in order to get really nice and pretty edges. And again, a lot of care and attention not to trap air bubbles there. And cut, trim as much as you can of the excess clay on the edge, because it will make things easier when you are uh, using your rolling pin to get rid of all the excess. So first, uh, bring all the clay up so it would be uh, sitting flush on the um, edge. And then first do another rough trim with your blade, after which you can use your um, rolling pin or a smaller rolling pin. You know, I prefer to use my little blue 
paintbrush and as you get over it you will notice as you press gently but harder and harder you will notice how the very top stop starts um, separating exactly at the line of the edge and you can just remove it with your finger and be left with an absolutely gorgeous edge that you can refine afterwards just by using a little bit of uh, alcohol i always have a little spray bottle with alcohol and you just spray a little bit of alcohol over the edge and then you smooth it with your finger and it will look absolutely fabulous uh, you might have a little bit of clay that might go in the recessed areas of the bezel. Just clean those up. It will come right off. Don't worry. But otherwise, your edges will be uh, flawless by using this very simple way of doing the edging. You know that I call this pretty much bez edging. So, after that, you use your texture directly on the back. And this way you don't have to deal with any kind of distortion, any kind of handling that might mess up your texture at all. It will be just pretty and beautiful. And now take the alcohol and simply smooth the edge. I want to do one more thing here because uh, having just plain white backing doesn't look very um, sophisticated. So I'm going to use a little bit of Perfect Pearls uh, in a reddish gold and place it uh, so it would go in the cracks. And of course, as usual, I will be lifting with some um, tape what is on the raised areas and then further after I bake my pieces I will be sanding off so I will only have a little golden uh, little fine network left on the back and I'm using perfect pearls because as you know it uh, bonds with the clay so you don't have to worry about it coming off rubbing off because I don't intend to varnish the back or the bezel itself the chalk pastel is in a recess so it will not rub off and uh, then just sand the edges and the back until you uh, lift enough of the mica powder to leave just a fine gold network in the back and I'm just using 400 and then a little bit of 600 for this once you have done that it comes time to put everything together I decided to use these uh, very big uh, jump rings that you can find at Hobby Lobby or Michaels but for this I will have to poke really big holes and this can be very dangerous for your pieces so I will have to go really slow and not skip any of the sizes so I will start with the smallest drill bit size. First decide which way you want your focal piece to go. And then, um, as I said, start with your smallest size of drill bit. And go through every other one until you get two, uh, one or two sizes wider, larger than the jump ring you want to use. Why? Because you don't want that jump ring to just sit there. Uh, it would make your necklace very stiff. You want it to move freely. Once you get to the larger sizes of drill bit, you'll have to go very gently and very slowly and not skip anything. Remember, this is the awesome uh, hand drill that um, I have found that is absolutely fantastic. 
once you have done all your holes then you can start um, putting the necklace together and I will just uh, close these as uh, good as I can on camera I will have to do the full close-up off camera because the position my hands are in um, do not allow me to do that and still be in the camera view but um, all you have to do is to simply use these big jump rings to connect the pieces together and then do um, place a chain at the end and this is pretty much it if you notice though I have uh, put some deep shine resin on the parts that I have put the effects on you will have to varnish those parts and I am not showing the deep shine um, application of the deep shine because I am going to do a separate uh, tutorial and review on how to do that and I will also have a little surprise for you concerning the deep shine and I am sure that you will love it but anyway if you don't have deep shine you can use min wax or any other shiny gloss and this is the necklace as you can see the effects are absolutely gorgeous and I know that you have said uh, a lot of you have said that you want uh, to see my pieces as they are worn so this time I am going to show you how uh, this necklace looks like and there you go this is how it looks like it's a pretty necklace and it will make you feel so gorgeous and beautiful happy clean <laughs>